so this is like a crossover. I hope this is lighting up. I got these new things to put on my microphone so I don't breathe on the microphone and make a lot of extra noise. This is a crossover post for, I have um, a channel that um, addresses bipolar disorder um, things that I was diagnosed with in my 20s. Um, I was diagnosed with social anxiety in my 20s. I also post about that um, on one channel. And another is uh, addresses uh, my other issue, which is autism, um, ADHD, but mostly the autism. I I did it that way on purpose so that we weren't people who were just looking for information on um, bipolar disorder or wanting to listen to vlogs on bipolar disorder didn't have to weed through posts that were about autism and vice versa. Uh, so, but this one, it, it, it leans towards bipolar disorder in that it could be, this could happen with other second disorders. I mean, oftentimes people have um, a lot of people have bipolar disorder and OCD or and PTSD or and seasonal affective disorder. You know, so um, so it kind of applies to both in that when you have more than one disorder or um, condition going on, you, sorry, you, at least me, analyze it to death in an effort to discern if it is okay now this is happening is it this disorder or condition or is it this disorder or condition or are they feeding on each other so that's what this video is going to be about um, but specifically towards my situation um, but I am sure there are more people out there who have both bipolar disorder and autism. But I was, even though I knew I had autism before I was diagnosed, which was only recently this year, I knew I had it. But I didn't know all the details I didn't know all the things that I was doing was in really you know related to the autism and when I got the diagnosis I was like oh that's why I do that that's what that is and then there were other things that I was like but I always thought that was my bipolar depression hypomania you know irritable outbursts, whatever. And now my psychiatrist, I, I've been diagnosed with autism by t twice. Once by a group of neuropsychologists, PhDs, that that's their thing. And um, also by my psychiatrist. And um, and I don't know how important it is to be able to put things in two slots, but it is for me. And that is 
a an autism trait of mine I like things to know where things go I avoid this room as much as possible because it's not done painted the front of it where I can see you can't see it it's not done it's not and I can't get do that I can't do anything else until I do that and then I can organize it in such a way that I meant for this room to be used. I organize as a hobby. I will organize a giant jar of buttons for fun. Um, DVDs, CDs, vinyl records. I just like to put them in their order and I may never touch them again but I see them in their order that I put them in and that makes me feel better so I avoid this room because it is not like that um, but we are getting there that is why for me it's important to know which disorder or condition is causing what symptoms um, I've come up with a few examples and so I have been thinking to myself you know all this time maybe this was not because bipolar disorder because my psychiatrist told me now he said the irritable outburst you describe and have attributed to um, mania don't go straight to thinking it's bipolar because it probably could be um, the sensory overload of autism and I started thinking about other things and I'm like well I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in my mid-twenties. Now, I was diagnosed with depression when I was 15 because I had moved away from where we had moved and I didn't handle it well. Um, but that wasn't it. I was, um, I was delusional. So I believe I had symptoms of bipolar disorder in my teen years, like 15, 14 to 15. I think that's really when it started. There was a point where, well, for a long time, I couldn't get the right medication. Nothing was working. So I spent years with full-on symptoms on medication that wasn't working. And, um, and I would have these irritable outbursts, and I've made videos about them, and I attributed them to, uh, because you can have a mixed episode in bipolar disorder where you're manic in that your thoughts are racing you can't sit still um, there could be some psychosis going on delusions but the content is negative um, could be violent I would have these moments where I just exploded, break things, throw things, slam things, hit things, pound on things, follow people around, yelling and slamming and doors slamming and just jumping up and down and punching my legs and, um, and I attributed it to mixed episodes. And when the 
psychiatrist said you can't immediately think bipolar when these happen and so I started paying attention and I also recalled while I was doing all this paperwork and interviewing and stuff to get assessed for um, autism I talked about how um, I would have these episodes where I was frustrated and I would have outbursts at school. They were a lot like what I was having as an adult. For example, I could not figure out division. Subtracting was hard too. And we worked on these little booklets at, that went in different levels. And it was, we were on our own kind of. You take your, the booklet that you were on, what number you were on, and work on that. When you finish that, you would move on to the next level, which was the next booklet. And I was used to being teacher's pet. I was always very quiet, barely spoke. And when I did speak, you couldn't hear me. I was basically mute. And then, but I, at that time, I was young enough. I was still only concerned about my teachers liking me, not my peers. Um, and I was falling behind because I couldn't figure out this. And some, even some multiplication tables in the higher numbers because they stopped letting me put dots on the paper. <laughs> so, like, if we went to have a test and it was three times five, I would make three rows of five on the paper, test paper, and count them. And they said I couldn't do that anymore. And so I fell behind. It was the first time I ever experienced anything like that. And one day I just started screaming and threw my book in the air, just like <laughs> pencils, papers, and everything. And I just like had let out this like bear scream and it was it, while we were having quiet time working on math problems and I just like lost it um, another time was when someone had befriended me and I latched on to her like I mean she was my lifeline um, she spoke for me, she, you know, guided me through the playground, and she was my everything, she was my key to the rest of the world, um, we were both kind of singled out by teachers to pick on, and she moved away, and I was completely and utterly lost, I couldn't make friends. I had no idea how. I mean, I watched other people, and I watch, and I watch, and I watch, but I still couldn't do it. Um, until finally this new girl came, and I noticed that she was quiet, and her clothes were wrinkled, and she just looked poor. And I thought... Um, I guess I thought something along the lines of, well, if I get to her first before the other kids tell her about me being a weirdo, I might have a chance. And it was so painful. It hurt so bad to walk from this brick wall I spent most of my time at to sit on the merry-go-round she was sitting on 
and just like say hi but she couldn't hear me <laughs> and, and that's how we started talking just asking questions back and forth and so I had managed to make a friend but as has been my pattern and is why I've not had a friend since the 90s I I'm clingy with friends I because they like I said they are my way into the world and I'm feel lost without some without a guide and we had an indoor recess and she wanted to play this game with these other kids and she didn't want to play the game I wanted to play. And she said, well, you can play with so-and-so and so-and-so with the game you want to, and I'll play this other game with these other people. And I tried my best to be gracious about this, but when I saw her playing with those other kids, I freaked out and went over and shoved all the game pieces like across the room, you know, through the board on the floor. It was just bizarre. Now, <laughs> I know. Um, and you know, and I did things like that. Oh, there was the time that by then, before this new friend, after my first friend left and before the second friend I made, there was a period where I was absolutely alone and I was bullied and teased and harassed every day, all day. And I just stood by this brick wall and watched the kids play and when I would start to cry, I would turn my face into a corner because I wanted friends. I just couldn't, I just couldn't figure out how it was done. And I watched and I watched trying to figure it out. And um, so, during that period, I was very, very fragile. And someone was teasing me in class. We were supposed to be doing something quiet. And they were just saying very bad things to me. And I, it, I hit a breaking point and ran underneath the table in front of the class and wouldn't come out. And so when they started bringing their workbooks up to the teacher to get it graded, someone made the remark that I looked like a dog in the doghouse. So everybody else, when they walked up, would bark at me like I was a dog in the doghouse. So I started barking back. And the teacher told me I had to go back to my seat, and I wouldn't until she said, do you want me to send a note home? And that's when I went back to my seat. Um, nowadays, if a kid was behaving that way, they would definitely have the parents in for a little conference. This was in the 70s. Everything was handled. It was that whole thing where... When your kid went to school, you signed parental rights over to the teachers, um, and they could punish you as seen fit. And they they used the paddle freely, and um, they would deal with situations there at school, not necessarily bring send any notes home or anything. So. Um, but if I think I think if I had behaved that way now, I would have gotten some help. Now there was a period where 
I asked, I was asking to be able to stay inside for recess and not go outside because I didn't have any friends, nobody liked me, and it was too painful to be there and watch. And I remember this young woman coming to the classroom during recess, and I was in there, and I remember her talking to me about how things I could say or do to make friends. So it it was addressed a little bit. So now I have been paying attention, close attention to when I have these outbursts, what's gone on before it, and is my mood different? Am I euphoric? Am I dysphoric? Or am I just agitated and just had too much for that day? And to be honest, I'm finding that it is part of what they explain that I have is a low frustration tolerance. So I think I've been having those outbursts all my life and not necessarily just when I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So that is a whole new concept. I'm still working on it, but that ha so far has been the result that I can, okay, I'm starting to feel that way. I can mitigate it by putting headphones on it, I must be very sensitive to sounds because when I put headphones on, noise canceling headphones, not these, these don't help. Um, it feels like I, I've taken a Valium and I can make decisions and I can follow directions and I can get things done and I can not get overwhelmed and start crying and you know, so I'm like, well, I'm starting to feel like I'm going to have an outburst. And I say to my mom, I need a little alone time. Um, and so sometimes if, and then if it does come, I'm alone. And it's, I'm not yelling at the dogs or my mom. That's one thing. And I'm already 24 minutes in. <laughs> the second one was... Uh, that I was thinking about was hypomania and, mis hypomania and special interests. Now, people with uh, hypomania, they tend to feel euphoric, um, but aren't quite, don't have a psychosis. They're euphoric, they feel great, life is great, they, you know, still have the symptoms of Monday spending, sexual, you know, irresponsible sex, and um, taking on grand plans, uh, spontaneous decisions to do big things. You tend to feel energized and peppy and like you can get stuff done and you talk a lot and uh, you're more outgoing and you're more comfortable with people that's those are the usual symptoms of hypomania some people write a lot I'm more of a writer a lot than I am a talker a lot except now with autism many people have special interests and I <laughs> have found out from family that I do um, what's called info dumping and with the special interests that can be mistaken as hypomania because I'm energetic, I'm 
zeroed in on one topic and I can follow people around just jabbering and jabbering about this one topic and all the information I know and have learned whether they ask for it or not and I can't stop until I'm done so that's info dumping and autism and it can look a lot like hypomania so I have to ask myself when I'm doing this what is my mood am I euphoric do I feel bitter bigger and better than the rest of the world um, do I feel like I have special power like there's something special about me um, or am I just really excited about a topic I'm fixated on and I am beginning to think that a lot of the times that I thought I was hypomanic I was actually fixated on a special interest and I was talking to other people info dumping um, whether they wanted to hear it or not but I wasn't hypomanic my, my mood I was not I felt good about my topic talking about my topic but about myself I didn't think I was anything special that's the difference that's what I feel like is the difference and so I think I am having less hypomanic episodes than I thought and so the same with the irritable outburst mixed episodes the <coughs> another um, thing that can be mistaken uh, is depression and burnout um, bipolar disorder you have bipolar depression for me anyway it's feeling exhausted fatigued lethargic almost catatonic um, drained blank brain nothing nothing is happening staring at the wall um, sometimes having crying outbursts but mostly it's just dysphoric negative feelings negative sayings going on in my head and you know you suck life sucks that kind of thing uh, the burnout experienced in autism is is about going through your day suppressing what comes natural to you if you're autistic <coughs> such as stimming repetitive behaviors um, talking about your special interests things like that and you're faking that you're doing okay socially but in reality it's taking up everything you have and if you work or go to school if you go to an event um, and especially if you do this over a long period of time you end up with burnout burnout is just tr you've been pretending you're someone you are not for a very long time and then there's like months of I just cannot get up and move and do this anymore so um, I have to say that bipolar wise as it stands now 
I don't feel like I... I'll have like a... I do think I do legitimately have depression. Um, but for short, very only for a few days. But sometimes I recognize it more as um, burnout or I just need to rest and not be around people or anything that making demands of me. On this one, I think I'm about half and half. Um, it is exhausting. Masking is what they call it. If you're autistic and you put on your mask so you can get through the day without, hopefully without appearing to be a weirdo according to the rest of the world. You know, like suppressing your stimming is, it's very detrimental to you. But to get along, sometimes you have to not spin in circles or flap your hands or do somersaults in the water. So they can be confused. But I think I have both. I think I experience both. Um, equally. And then the last one I wanted to mention was s social anxiety. Now, I was diagnosed with just social anxiety in my early 20s. Now, I do have social anxiety, but it's for, but it has a reason. And it's part of the autism. The, I, whereas before, so before I was diagnosed with autism, um, I thought my, I couldn't figure out why I had social anxiety. I asked every therapist I saw, my doctors, everybody, I'm like, I don't, un why is it that I get anxious around people especially larger you know the larger the group why um i know what i'm talking about i know i know what i'm talking about and i know i'm prepared so why do i feel anxious i do think i have more of a performance anxiety than social anxiety I think the social anxiety is autism related because I have a lot of difficulty in interpreting what other people are conveying to me body language and facial expression and I describe it as I can see their eyes and then I can see their mouth and then maybe I can see their nose but I don't I just I can't quite put it all together and come up with oh I just made them feel embarrassed they're angry with me they like me they're flirting with me. I can't receive those. I can't in interpret this. I'm clueless. And I do not express how I'm feeling very well with facial expressions and body language. And I often have come off as People have accused me of being rude, indifferent, insincere, um, uninterested, and I could be having a really good time, but my face is flat. And so 
between those two things, communication socially doesn't happen well at all. Um, unless I have a script and then when I run out of that script runs out, I, it make my first beeline away from someone. Or if we're talking about my special interests, I can jump in and then be very animated and then the subject changes and I go back to um, you know and I get a lot of people are you okay or, the, or I can tell they're coming over to me to talk to me because they see I'm standing there alone and I'm like I'm standing here alone because I want to be alone but I still want to be watching what's going on I'm enjoying myself this way but people don't get that and they feel like they need to come over and start talking to me and they make me anxious um so i i think i actually have more of a performance anxiety than social anxiety and then i have discomfort and confusion when it turns social so I'm having to analyze I don't want to overanalyze either and I don't know how important it is to anybody else but it's very important for me to be able to put things into categories and that makes me feel better so I'm kind of confused right now and that's why I had two channels I need to keep them separated um I, I, I don't, I would never ever say that I don't have bipolar disorder, no, I just have autism, no bug, no more bipolar disorder, because I have had manic episodes and deep, deep clinical depressions. I don't think autism causes psychosis and delusions and so I'm positive I have bipolar disorder my conclusion is that it is more well controlled than I thought and now I'm learning about the autism and how far do I want to go with this whole stimming thing um, the headphones feels so good to wear I wear them all the time I, every time I can they're better than the e little ear things I do use those sometimes they go they look like earbuds almost but they aren't as good as the headphones I just love wearing the headphones um, so I, I I used to think that I see I take uh, lithium and Seroquel ex Seroquel is extended release lithium is continuous release and right around between four and seven every day I start getting this inner agitation in me and I used to think that it was because that's about when those medications would be starting to wear off and I was getting ready to take another dose eventually soon. But now I'm leaning more towards, I've been going through the day because I do see clients, I've gotten more dog trained clients. I go through the day dealing with things with background noise and forefront noise, screens, light, colors, all these other stimuli. And in the evening, I get to a point where I can't compensate for it anymore. And I think that's what's calling, causing the inner restlessness and agitation. Because I put those headphones on and take a little quiet alone time. 
and I feel better. So I'm having to use my Xanax less, which is a good thing. Um, so I, yeah, I have been starting to wear my headphones to the store. It makes shopping so much easier for me. They, uh, I, I shop faster. I make decisions quicker. I, it's just so different. Um, I'm just, and I knew that. I already knew that in a way because when I worked at the animal shelter, and I know I've said this before, we got headphones, noise canceling headphones because the kennel where all the dogs were was very loud. And um, I put those on and it just felt so good at like, taking volume and um so I started wearing them the whole time I was there even when I wasn't in the kennel and now I understand I didn't know at the time why it made me feel better at all but now I do um yes yeah, so uh So that is, uh, that's that. If anybody has any ideas or thoughts or questions, please let me know below. Um, I'll try to link my autism page. It's, it's, it's in its infancy. So um, it may never catch on. Everybody everybody's got autism now i know that's what they're saying but we knew i knew i had it before i was diagnosed years before i was diagnosed but whenever i brought it up to a health professional they would give me you're not a boy so you can't have it you're working a job you can't have it you're, you're talking to me right now. You can't have it. You know. So anyway. That's that. Bye.